turn around here and go through the gears and see how they work. Already I can tell that first gear is way nicer. First gear, second gear goes in, no problem. See, third gear. Well, all right guys, it has been way, way, way too long since I have posted anything on YouTube. And um, well, it's just life. Uh, life has gotten in the way of a lot of things and the van is definitely not something that comes first. But yesterday I had a little bit of a problem getting the car out of the parking area right here. And my shifter just seemed to get stuck in like the reverse setting. So I pushed down on the shifter, put it into reverse. And when I tried to pull it back out of reverse, it stayed stuck down. And it doesn't really seem to be in any real gear right now. I don't really know. It kind of looks like it's in second gear um, or uh, fourth, but I don't think it is. It's kind of like in between. And it doesn't seem to be wanting to go back into neutral. So I'm gonna have to take out the spare tire, take a look at what's going on inside of the box. It feels like it's binding up inside of the box right at the front where the shifter attaches to the floor. More than likely, I'm gonna end up needing to replace all of the bushings inside of the system from the shifter up front all the way to the back next to the transmission. It's probably good to do them anyway. The plastic up here looks pretty bad and I'm sure that the whole system would benefit just from an upgrade. I'm gonna go ahead and go online. I'm going to order uh, the bushings. I'm gonna order any parts that I think that I'm gonna need. I'm also gonna order the little plastic U-joint in the middle that attaches the, the rods together. There are already really good videos on doing this, so I'm not really gonna make this a video about how to change the bushings in your shifter linkages and stuff. That has all been done before on YouTube, and there are some really good videos too, specifically, that I'll be linking down in the description, and they really go over everything very well. Okay, so to start working on this thing, I have been informed to make sure that the transmission is in neutral, and with my stick shift the way that it is all bound up, I'm not actually able to get it into neutral. And I've crawled underneath the car here, and uh, I can tell that it's not a neutral because the little shifter on the side of the transmission, it kind of hangs down, is in the forward position, so as if the, the stick shift is too far back. So I need to figure out why it's binding up and put the transmission into neutral before I can actually solve the problem. I started with taking out my spare tire, and was surprised to find the bolt holding the tire carrier closed missing. Another crisis averted. spare tires out of here we can kind of sneak our way up and look at the box that's underneath the shifter see what's going wrong in there well it looks like there's four 10 millimeter nuts under there that I'll have to take off let's do that Well, the box actually looks in pretty good shape and it just looks a little bit dirty. I'll clean it up. And also I noticed that the little, I don't really know what to call them. They're like little ears on the shift bar. I noticed that uh, there should have like little plastic bushings in them and they're all just eaten up and not even there anymore. That's all right. Uh, the kit that I bought actually has those. So I'll just replace them when the kit gets here. It does worry me a little bit that I haven't really found what's binding up here in the front. Hopefully it's not something more serious that's going on in the transmission. Well, the mosquitoes and the heat out here are absolutely terrible, but um, I think that this box is clean enough. Uh, it's gonna be filled with grease again anyway, so there's no sense like going overboard on the cleaning. I just wanna get all of the, the old grease off to make sure that there's no like chunky crap in the new grease. Some of the parts arrived, but it's only the back piece, the little uh, ball section that connects onto the transmission. The rest of the order is coming from Go Westy. This one just happened to be from a different company, so uh, it got here a little bit quicker, I guess. I was actually able to get the car into neutral, but I really had to shove it into neutral. So I'm thinking that something in the back is actually causing the problem because it seems to be moving around fine up in the front. I'm still gonna change everything just because I think that the plastic parts need the changing. I think that maybe we should start with the back. 
I pulled the new shift lever boot over the lever, which was a bit of a pain, but carefully using a small screwdriver helped. Then I moved to the front and unbolted the stick shift from the front shifter shaft. Now the stick shift was free to be pulled out of the car. Alright, the shifter is out and uh, I've taken the shift knob off and I need to get a wrench to take off the little shift extender that I've got on there. Now I'm going to take the coupling off of the two shift rods so that I can separate them and take them out of the car. I can clean them up and uh, get ready to put those new little plastic tabs onto the actual shifter in the front. Before taking the clamp off, I made sure to mark the edge with a pen. This makes it way easier to find the adjustment later on. Next, to remove the rear shift shaft, I unbolted the two 13mm bolts holding the bushing to the mount on the transmission. So there you go, actually that was the problem right there. That little plastic shifter ball that attaches to the little part that goes onto the transmission was completely disintegrated and it's just, it's not even there anymore. It's just a metal shaft at this point. Um, I can see why that would give me problems and I could probably get away with just replacing that one piece, but um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and replace all the wear items and all the plastic on the, these shifter rods and in the front. Every time I took something off, I marked it for proper adjustment. I also started using whiteout instead of sharpie since it was easier to see on the oily parts. The rear bar was now off. The front bar came off easily as well. At first, I thought I could pull it through the front, but found it easier to pull it over the fuel tank and through the rear. I remarked everything with the whiteout pen again, and I started cleaning off all the grease that I could. bar was seriously grimy and probably had never been touched before. Even the bushing was very loose. The broken shift ball was actually still inside the shift lever. The lever is held on to the rear shift bar with this pin. I'll have to end up driving that out with something. I tried to remove it with nails, a clamp, and even a stainless steel bolt that I found in the garage. Everything I tried just kept bending until I used a hardened steel drill bit. That got the pin out easily. Next I moved my attention to the shift lever still attached to the transmission. I made sure the car was in neutral before I actually pulled the lever off. I've taken the old shift mechanism off the transmission and now I'm going to apply a little bit of grease to that little shaft and I'm going to put in the new boot and the new shift lever. I'm not really going to grease this up too much just since the other parts haven't arrived yet. I don't want to have a whole bunch of grease out here and getting dust inside of it. 
I looked everywhere online for torque specs and the type of grease I should be using, but the general consensus was that torque is not very important and the type of grease didn't matter much either. I used some high temp general purpose grease I had lying around the garage. Well, so far, out of this entire project, that has been the most difficult part. I'd say that the, the worst part of this entire thing is trying to get the boot onto the transmission. And these mosquitoes are getting worse by the second. The next thing I wanna do is clean up the uh, rear shift shaft, just uh, in preparation for the new parts to come in. I'll also be replacing the U-joint at the center of the two shift bars. And like everything else in this shifter assembly, it has a top and bottom. I made sure to mark them. The rear bushing assembly came apart pretty easily, and I just cleaned everything up with some degreaser. under the car again to the front bushing. All right, we got everything pretty much cleaned up. All of the shift shafts have been cleaned. Everything has been taken apart and I've marked everything on like what's the top, what's the bottom, how everything is supposed to go. Everything should go back together the way that it was before because I've marked everything off. Now, of course, there probably will be some fine tuning of adjustment for the shifter. Hopefully I'll be in at least around the ballpark just so that I can put everything back together, take it out for a ride and be confident that it's not gonna break on me. It took about a week, but all the other parts finally showed up and they were ready for install since I had already cleaned up the shift shaft. Everything from Go Westy finally arrived and I'm really happy about that. Especially happy about this, which is the two little plastic guides, I guess you'd call them, that go up in the front shifter bar. We need to put these on first, just because they need to harden for I think 24 hours just to be safe. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I wanna put the bar through the car first and over the gas tank so that I don't bump these things off. Originally, by bushings didn't have these bellows, but newer vans did and it seemed like a logical upgrade to ensure the grease and bushings didn't collect dust. Rear bushing needs to be installed on the rear shaft before the lever is installed.
Installing the new U-joint was pretty easy as well, although those little o-rings can be a pain to get in place. Well, it's nighttime now and my camera was dead and I missed filming a lot of what we've just done. Um, we put the bar back together in the rear and we put the bar back up onto the car. I also was able to shove the front bar through over the gas tank and then position it through the hole so that I can push on the bellows. I can push on the metal part, the bushing, the other metal part and the other bellows onto the bar. It's kind of confusing, but you'll see when I put the camera down there, you'll see what I'm talking about. And then I just lined up the two bars uh, the way that it was before with my mark in the center of that little crease where the clamp goes. Pretty sure I'm still gonna need a little bit of adjustment, but it is what it is. With the front bar now in place, I was able to install the shift bushings. All right, well, the next day is here, and I think that the next thing that we're gonna do is the shifter rebuild. the shifter was pretty straightforward to do. The kit even came with a new bolt and nylock nut. The bushings for the shifter were a little more difficult, but after watching a few YouTube videos it all pops together without too much of a hassle. I made sure to stuff as much grease as I could into this part. I really don't want to see it again and I don't want to have to re-grease it. Alright, well that went pretty smoothly. Everything's been done and the shifter has been rebuilt. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the shifter back in, but before I need to cut the zip ties on the little shift forks that were holding down the little plastic things that were being epoxied on. It's been about 14 hours since yesterday when I put the epoxy on there, so they should be dry. installed everything back into the van and now it was time to put the box back on and take the car out for a test drive. I put a bunch of grease into the box because again like I said before I really don't want to have to see this stuff again and I don't want to have to come back in here to regrease it. Oh 
my gosh. Well, that was a pretty bad mistake. Make sure you remember to put that little plastic spacer underneath the shifter because I completely forgot to do it and um, had to redo pretty much everything. I had to go back underneath, take off the box, undo the bolt, take the whole shifter out, put the plastic thing in and put everything back together, re-grease everything and make sure everything is good. Um, but now I'm having a problem shifting into first gear. I found that the bar was just misaligned. It must have gotten out of whack when I was putting the clamp back on. I adjusted back to the line that I had made and everything worked fine. Now it was time for a test drive. Let's turn around here and go through the gears and see how they work. Already I can tell that first gear is way nicer. Look at that turning radius. All right, first gear, second gear goes in, no problem. See third gear, just wants to go right in. Real tricky one, fourth gear. And we're in fourth, beautiful. Well, we're done, finally, oh my goodness. It is a huge change. I mean, I am actually pretty glad that thing broke because now my shifter works really well. I didn't even know how much shifter bushings could change the performance of a car, but let me tell you, it actually does. Uh, the car shifts much easier in all gears from neutral, uh, including reverse. Well, that's pretty much it. All I need to do is drive the van more often now. If you like what you saw, please subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please put them down in the comment section of the video. I will be linking those videos that really helped me out in this installation process down in the description and I'll see you all next time.